All right, I'm a little nervous to do this part. Yep, it does dump out. You've probably heard of pour over coffee. You've probably heard of immersion brewing, which is using things like the French press. This sort of combines the two. It's called the palm press. We're gonna try it out. So basically, instead of a paper filter, you dump coffee into the silicone sleeve. It smells pretty good, actually. That's good, what is this? Then you pour up to the fill line. This kind of like makes me nervous. Ooh, stop just in time, okay? And now I cover it, and I wait three minutes for it to brew. So immersion brewing, you know, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but the idea is it's really simple. It just means that the beans are, are underwater and they're submerged for a while. So we're waiting our three minutes. This is kind of the boring part. But now what I have to do is I have to flip this, I invert it, and I'm gonna push down. Oh, that squeeze motion is actually pretty, pretty not too bad. It smells nice. It smells really fruity, it smells a little bit spicy. solid. It's actually pretty solid. It's really smooth. It's not too acidic. I think that not having to buy filters because everything here is reusable um, is a real plus. So the company does provide coffee that you can use, but you could, you know, theoretically use any coffee you wanted. So you're not sort of trapped into a system and a business model like with a K-cup. I'm not sure though that I love the experience itself. Like there really is something almost therapeutic about doing pour over. There's something nice about swirling, you know, the water over the beans and watching it drip. Honestly, for something in my kitchen, it's just not really beautiful enough. Um, it really, you know, this is a plastic body. It really feels like camping or portable gear more than it does something you'd want to use for your sort of morning coffee ritual. The one thing I will say is that little flip where the coffee starts to spill out if you're not fast enough is a good example of, of something that a great design firm would have designed around. Like they would have figured out how to eliminate that little point of tension. As minor of a point as that might seem, I think it's actually enough to limit the adoption of this at the wide scale. What do you think? Is this product useful or useless? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see more useful or useless, click here. And for more Fast Company videos, click here. And don't forget to subscribe.